locked down. Let me work on something new. I worked on this company. Eight months have passed. Do you know what you could have done in eight months? Create a whole business. That's what we did, right? Like, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the One Percenter Podcast. Sam and I are excited for today. We got an amazing guest, someone who I've uh, been following for a long time. You guys have definitely seen him on YouTube. He's going to probably be in the suggested uh, after this video. But we got Jose Zuniga. He's the creator of the Teaching Men's Fashion YouTube channel with over four, almost 5 million subscribers. Uh, he's created Jade Black, an amazing sunglasses company. He's got Essentials Clothing. He's got Heat Grooming. He's got so much, guys. This guy's a stud. Thank you he so much stud, for being man. on the show, Jose. Thank oh, you. Yo, thank you for that intro, bro. Like, <laughs> you're hyping me up, man. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. I'm excited. That's awesome, man. So why don't you tell us how, where it all began? How, how teaching men's fashion came to be what it is today? Um, so funny enough, this was a kind of like an accident. It was a hobby. I was 16 at the time. Um, and my brother, this was when, I don't know if you guys remember, Instagram was just iPhone only. Like it wasn't even on Android, right? So, and it was like a, a, a food sharing app more than anything, right? Or photography sharing app. So Juan created it, my brother created an account and uh, we started talking about style where we would post a picture and then a tip underneath. It was really nothing crazy. Even the name, you can see the name is rudimentary teaching men's fat, like no thought whatsoever. This was literally a, like a joke really more than anything. Long story short, yo, we, I think we blew up to a thousand followers within like a month. And at that time that was like, a thousand people are following me right now. I felt like a celebrity, right? That was all. That was all I needed. It was like a spark. Um, from there, it just started growing. I think we, by the time I hit like 12,000 followers, I opened my, the YouTube channel. Um, but the YouTube channel itself, I never took it seriously until like 2016. Uh, 2016 is when I like boggled down. By 2016, I, I only had like 30 or 40,000 uh, subscribers. So that's when I like quit my job and I'm like, I'm going full throttle on this. Like I want to make this work, you know? Um, but that's basically where it all began. I incorporated my first business, like legit, you know, with Florida and everything at the age of 18, that business was a complete flop. I lost money by, by 18 and a half, 19. I think I was like $14,000 in debt. Now keep in mind, I come from like a, like a low income family. So I, di I couldn't go to my parents and be like, yo, get me out of this. They didn't even know. Like they, they didn't know I wasn't dead until I got out of debt. Uh, my personal credit cards maxed, the company credit cards maxed, and I was like, what the hell do I do now? Um, but yeah, that was the beginning of everything. So how'd you get out of that? Like, where, where did that, that oh, growth come so from? Basically, this was, now we're going into around 2015 era. It was really, that was probably like the lowest point of my, of my life, just because when you're an 18-year-old, you're supposed to do 18-year-old stuff, right? Supposed to. In other words, I should have been hanging out with my friends. I should have just gone to college. I was going to college. I finished my, I got my degree in finance. So I did that too. So at that point, the, the lowest point, I remember when I was just so in debt, I couldn't go out on dates. I couldn't do anything. Like I just didn't have money and I couldn't tell my parents anything. They wouldn't, they, they just wouldn't know what to do. Um, I just remember like, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Um, I remember one night I was just, I was broken. I was just like this, like, why am I doing this to myself? This makes no sense. Why, why did I go down this path? Why can't I just be, a regular college student, go to school, get my, get good grades, get a good job and be peaceful. Right. I don't know what happened that night. I, I was really trying to quit that night. And that night I remember it was, I think it was September, 2015 around that area. And it's crazy how I remember this so specifically, because I just remember like feeling like inside of me, like one more time, just try one more time. Right. And I always say that was God that pushed me, right. It gave me that confidence to keep going. Cause I really just wanted to give it up. Like, why am I wasting my time? I remember every time somebody asked me, like, yo, how's your company doing? Or how's it going? Like with this fake ass smile, I'd be like, Oh, it's, it's going good. But inside I'm like, I'm a failure, like fat L. And then when people would ask me like, why are you doing that? Why are you wasting your time doing all that? Right. I'm not making revenue. I'm wasting time. I just felt like a flop. Right. Um, I just, like I said, during that, that, that night that I was really just like, done. I, I was about to quit. I just felt inside of me try one more time. And that's when, um, this is around the September, October time. And I remember I started like, all right, I'm going to take this seriously, especially the YouTube side. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to push. And I just started working more and more and more. And I, I started trying to realize how, all right, how can I monetize this? How can I actually make money off of this somehow? Right. By, I think it was November. I had closed my first deal. It was like a thousand dollars or Last time, like 700 bucks, right? 
Um, at the, up until that point, I hadn't made any money. I was just broke. <laughs> I was losing money. That's all I was doing. And uh, no, I, that, that, that's all the confidence I needed that by December, I put in my resignation, my two weeks notice. And I, I used to be a copy boy. And I was like, you know what? I'm quitting. And January 1st of 2016, I'm like, I'm going full throttle on this. By the first month, I had racked in about six grand. Um, by the second month, I was out of debt. And by April 2016, I had rented my first office. I was just like on cloud nine. Um, by the end of that year of 2016, I had my goal was to make 100K that year. I was 19 at the time or 20 at the time. Um, I racked in almost 350K that year. Nice. Yeah, Damn, dude. Um, and again, like I always take that back to God, though. Like I feel like it was this close of me just being like, "This is pointless. I'm wasting my time." It's been two, three years of nothing other than stress, time wasted, and money wasted. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I say this a lot in my videos that a lot of times, and I mean, Sam clearly works out. The man's jacked, so he knows what I'm about to say. But like, I related to the gym a lot. I, I like going to the gym. And there's some times where you're working out and, and whatever it is, let's say you're doing curls or you're running, whatever it is, it gets to a point that your body starts getting uncomfortable. And in your head, you start getting this voice. I get it at least. And, and it's like, stop, you're uncomfortable. Nobody's looking. You're not competing against anybody. Why do you keep pushing yourself? But then like deep, deep, even deeper than that, I have a voice that says one more time, one more time, one more time. And before you know it, you look up and like, damn, I did a lot. Like I completed a lot in this workout. I feel business is the same way, right? Where a lot of times it, you feel like you're hitting this wall, right? Like, why are you doing this to yourself? It's uncomfortable. Like I, I've said this to myself today, right? I'm like, yo, you know what? I stress, just so you guys know, I wake up at four in the morning. I go to sleep at 10. I, I'm on a six hour sleep schedule just so I can get 18 hours of work plus family time, right? Um, and sometimes I, and I tell my wife this sometimes, I'm like, you know, I could be a regular ass entrepreneur make about an easy a million a year and work three, three weeks out of the three days out of the week comfortable. I know I could do that physically, right? I can't like, I cannot backtrack even though I know it's possible and it would give me peace of mind. I know that if I'm at, I'm at that stage, I won't have peace of mind, yeah. right? Like I, I'll get antsy. Like I need to do more, you know? Um, but yeah, kind of, kind of oh. went on. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, t I totally can relate. You know, I have the same schedule. You know, I, you know, I wake up 4 a.m. till 10. I can, I can, you know, do the same thing. But we always want to push. You know, we always want to go to the next level. You know, and uh, you know, you're a family man. So you know, I love the fact that you said in that 18 hours you have family time. Oh, and and that's why. So um, it, it, maybe you'll know because you watch my videos a lot. I used to say that I used to wake up at five. This is single days. I would wake up at five thirty, and I thought that was impressive at the time. I was like, <laughs> Nobody's out working me, right? Uh, what five thirty? Go to sleep. You know, I had a schedule nine ten latest, right? Um, then obviously I had a I had a wife, then I have a kid, and now they're my motivation, right? That that's who I want to spend my time with. But my drive is entrepreneurship, right? My drive is growing businesses. I think to, to, to live a happy life, you need to, you need to have a balance of both. So what I did is, you know what, I'm waking up earlier. I'm getting in earlier, getting more work done earlier. That way now I try to leave the office by let's say four or five, right? I'll work from four to four to five, come home. And now I can spend time with my wife and my kid. And the great thing with the wife that I chose, right? That I think the partner that you choose is so crucial to your success. If you decide to get married, so crucial. She needs to have the vision that you have. Yo, my, my girl's hungry hungry while i'm while i'm working she's studying for her mcat so it's like this mutual motivation right which couldn't have been any better i couldn't have positioned it any better again blessing you know yeah that's that's one thing i've, I've really admired you because because i'm in that stage you know i'm 20 and i have a girlfriend and i have those those conflicting things and i'm like dude like is this a relationship that can sustain long term in times of hey i gotta push through to build to build whatever it is at the moment so like, like I, I totally relate with you on that, man. Um, I think everyone can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I mean, you are, you are 25, and you're doing, you're doing well. You know, you, you have, you, you're married. You have a family. Like, you are consider, you're living what could be considered a dream life. It is a dream I mean, life. I, I mean, at any age, he's doing that at 25. Yeah. I mean, jeez. I mean, at 70 is a dream life. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, Honestly, man. Honestly. <laughs> so, like, do you? 
do you ever have, like, like you were saying, you, you could stop, you know, you yeah. could work those three days a week. Yeah. Do you, do you think that there's strain on other relationships because you choose not to? Or do you think that there's, that maybe you're sacrificing in one area because you're not? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I get that, right? Um, thankfully, I've built a business where I'm able to work with my, so on top of having employees, obviously my, my brother's my partner in this business. And then I've even hired my sister. So I see them every day. I, I try to set up my life in a way where I get to have my family close still. Well, I st I'll give you a great example. I'm, we're building a massive office in New York, right? Big projects, the most expensive thing I, I've spent money on right now, right? It's being built out. Projection should be January. This is a mid COVID by the way, right? Um, I'm literally moving my entire family over there. Like my mom, my dad, and obviously employees go too, because I want to have them close, right? But I also don't want to stop. Yeah. yeah. There's always solutions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's always ways around it. And, and I, I, I think a lot of times it's an excuse. If, if both of those things are your, my priority is my family and then my business, I'll make sure I make time for both. I'll wake up earlier if I have to. I'll work harder to make more to make sure I can keep them close if I have to. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's always a way, but yes, it, def it definitely does leave a strain, right? Like sometimes, let's say there's a family event, I'll be off to the corner on my computer or on my phone because I'm working, right? But my family's used to it at this point because they, 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 they know that that's how I am, but uh -huh. I'm still trying to spend time with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. How was, how was that, I'm curious, in more of the building phase? Because right now they've seen the fruits, the fruits of your labor and they believe in you. How was it like when you really didn't have any results and you didn't really have a track record of success? Hard. It was harder, man. Yeah. yeah. Because not everybody has the vision. You know what I mean? And it's understandable. That's fine. It should be that way, right? Imagine everybody was a psycho. <laughs> you could go broke real easy. Um, and you got to keep in mind that everything that I know where I'm at right now is because of my parents, especially my dad, right? My dad was, yo, I'm, I've always said everybody has certain traits can be a good thing or a bad thing, right? I have a trait where I'm very pers persistent. That trait could be a good thing or a bad thing. If I would have gone down the wrong path with my hard head, I would have just been ramming myself into a wall nonstop. But because my dad was just such a great leader, right? Directed me down the right path. My persistence is working. My persistence is building businesses, not getting drunk or being the best party boy out there, right? That could have been my persistence, right? And I would have just rammed it. And I probably would have been the best at it, or at least one of the best at it. But thankfully, it went another direction, right? My dad taught me hard work. Yo, my parents came. My mom, just so you know, just one generation ago, my mom came... Came, I was born here, but she was born in Honduras in this tiny little uh, town, li not even a town. It was a, a population of a hundred. It's called Barrosas, like literally a dirt, a village, dirt roads. She got electricity by the time she was in like in her teens. That was just one generation ago, wow. right? She came here. She, she used to clean houses. My dad, my dad was a little better off. He lived in the city, but still Honduras is one of the poorest countries in the world, right? And came here making four bucks an hour. Now, this man worked, not speaking English, just work, 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 no degree, work, work, work. Within his landscaping firm, he's one of the highest, he's making six figures in a landscaping firm. This is an immigrant, right? This is now, right? This wasn't through when I was growing up. It was different, but he worked his way there. I saw that. You know what I mean? Um, so that, that, that shaped me. However, they also came from a, from a point of view, which I know it's very standard that the only way to make money or to be successful is a doctor or lawyer. Oh yeah. Yeah. We know. So, about exactly. So my brother, since he was, he's seven years older than me, he actually went through law school. He hated it. He paid for it. Right. Expensive. No ROI whatsoever. Right. That's because in their mentality, the world that they lived in, yeah. that was the only way to make it out. And I understand it completely. Right. That's why I said completely fine. So when I told him this was my vision, I remember one time I told my mom, I'm like, if I ever make 70 K a year, I'm quitting school. I was, I was in school for finance. And she said, well, I pray you never make 70. She literally said that. I pray you never make 70 K because you wanted me to finish school. So I ended up finishing school for my mom. But the year that I made 350, I was third year. I think I was three years in into my degree. 
And I only finished it just so my mom could be happy. You know what I mean? Because I did not need the degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm kind of in that boat right now. I'm, I'm going into my third year. Make and your I, parents happy, bro. Yeah. You only got it for so long. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll take, the, the, same I'll too, take the advice, man. But, I got my doctor for my mom. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I'm sure it made her happy. The, oh, wow. You know? yeah. So what else, do, what, what else matters? You know, all the dollar bills in your bank account won't matter. Making your parents happy. Make sure they're good, you know? I love it, man. I love it. Now, I want to talk to you about your YouTube growth. You know, do you think when you started, I mean, obviously it is a different time, but how, how can new creators and new people coming up get relevant with such a saturated market? Um, it's always been saturated. I, I, I heard this once before. I don't know where I heard this from. I'm going to paraphrase, but for people that always talk about oversaturation of markets, they're like, go walk down a bread aisle and tell me how many brands you see there. Go walk down a water aisle. Tell me how many brands you see there. Just water just came out two years ago. Water bottles, okay? It's, it's a $200 million company, right? You can always bring in market share. So when it comes to being a YouTuber, it's no different, right? One, you gotta work. You gotta work, bro. So when I grew that channel, especially in the, in the men's style niche, this was in 2016, I was one of the first YouTubers that I was putting out a video every single day. Monday through Sunday went up a video and then I made it a mission for myself to get every single video sponsored. I'm like, if I'm going to work, I'm going to get paid for it. Right? Cause again, if you watch a show, there's TV ads. If you hear a podcast, there's ads. If you listen to Spotify or I'm sorry, uh, Pandora or watch Hulu, there's ads. YouTubers should be paid in the same format. Right? I don't think, and again, I had that mentality in 2016. Everybody criticized me like, Oh my God, you're a seller, yada, yada, yada. But it's like, it's not a, I'm a seller. I'm putting in work. Yeah. I can't live for free, you know? And what ends up happening is that that motivates you, right? So because I'm getting paid every single day, now I can wake up and do it again because I can put food on the table yeah. and yeah. do it again. So I didn't burn out like a lot of YouTube, a lot of YouTubers burn out, right? Because they're essentially working for free. You know what I mean? Yes, they get ad revenue, but unless you're getting hundreds of millions of views, it's not sustainable and or if you're cursing or not family friendly, you're demonetized, right? You're, you're at the mercy of YouTube at this point, right? So they burned out. It happens all the time. It's been four years. I have not burned out. I'm still putting up, I think this week, six videos went up on my English channel. I have a Spanish channel that I put five to six videos up. I have a vlog channel, which you watch. I put two videos up. Now I'm doing, I actually multiplied it. I'm doing 14 a week. You know what I mean? Work. Like that's, there's no shortcut around this. You know yeah. what I mean? I want to do one video and just like, I'll go viral and make it. There you go. People what? want, people want a lottery ticket. That's yeah. what people want. People yeah. want to be Charlie D'Amelio. Charlie D'Amelio is amazing. That's a one in a million. I'm not going to hold my breath to try to be Charlie D'Amelio. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm curious, man. What does your creation process look like? Like, how do you stay, how do you stay so creative after putting thousands of videos out? That, that's, that's the believer out of everything, out of everything. That's the hardest part. I guess. That is, and, and people don't see it, right? Like I can, on a single day, I'll shoot 14 videos back to back. I've done it before. I'll literally just change video number two, change. By the time I'm done, I'm drained. Yeah. But if I got the content, I'll put in the work. The hardest part is looking at a screen and jogging your mind. What do I create next? Yeah. But it's like business, right? Like it's the same thing with business. Like where do I take this business next? Except I'm doing it every week, 10 times a week. That same question over and over and over again. It's hard. It's hard. The, the best thing I can tell you is read a lot. I read a lot. If I were to show you my notes, so just to give you an example, I script out all my videos. Every video is about, I put about a thousand words into a script. I do again, six to seven scripts a week. And I've been doing this for four years. I could have probably written five Harry Potter, <laughs> Potter novels by this yeah. point, right? A lot of work. Um, it's hard. It's, it's just people want a, a shortcut. There's, there's no shortcut at this point. It's, it's, you, it's, it's a business that you treat like a business. It's not a hobby. That's the difference. It's a business, you know? And like at this point, if I knew a shortcut, yo, I'd be a billionaire. <laughs> I kid you not. There's yeah. no shortcut, right? The, the best thing you can do, if you wanted a shortcut, I'm going to give you one. Look at big youth creators. Look at big creators. Look at your Charlie. Look at your Logan. Look at your whatever, right? Whoever you want to and study what they do, right? Like, right. This is how long their videos are. This is how much they post. This is how, this is how he entertains me throughout the video. Break it down 
yeah. repeat the process. That would be the best shortcut. And it still requires a lot of work. You're yeah. not going to be one and done. It's just to give you a guideline. Yeah, yeah you know? for sure. Study the best. Exactly. Yeah. Your, your channels evolved a lot. You know, I, I think yeah. up until maybe a year and a half yeah. ago, you were only in the studio. And it was just, yeah. now, now you've been doing more of lifestyle stuff. Now yeah. you've been uh, talking. Wh why has that change come about? What we were talking about, right? Like two things in, in business, it's the same thing too, right? Like you gotta, change. you gotta be ahead of trends. You can't stay stagnant. You gotta evolve. Um, and when it comes to creative and entertaining, it's the same thing. Um, when I get bored, I know my audience gets bored. I was getting bored. All right. And at this point I'm like, I'm trying to bring in two more editors so I can have a team of editors because I have ideas. I don't have time. Yeah. That's the problem. I have crazy ideas. I don't have the time. I don't have the, the manpower. You know what I mean? And even if I do have the manpower, it's really hard to get them to work like I want them to work. There's a, there's, there's a, there's a phase of, of training that has to happen, right? Which again, I don't have time for that phase of training. You see what I'm saying? So, but evol evolving is important. And that's the main thing is keeping it fresh. You know, it's important to, to, to stay alive. Yeah, for sure. I think you and you and Aaron Marino, we had him on the podcast also. And I think you guys, like you guys do it so well and you're the biggest in the space for a reason. For yeah. sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. But yeah. Let, let's talk about your businesses. Um, you know, outside of the YouTube, was the first one, uh, was it Essentials? So my first one, which was the failed one, was Estuniga, right? So... Estuniga was a clothing company, a menswear clothing company, suits, tailored, custom shirts, shoes, complete flop. Uh, funny enough, though, I kept the name and I, I turned it into my parent company. And then every company that I own is under that. Um, so right now we have Jade Black, right? That business is killing it. Uh, well, let me go backtrack. Essentials was my first one. Um, Essentials was the company I launched in end of 2017, early 2018. So it's been about two years with Essentials. That's my baby. Killing it, man. That's my baby. I'm gonna give you just a few numbers because, like, this last launch amid COVID, right? COVID pandemic. I re my bar for this launch for sales was like on the floor, and I would have been happy with it. I was like, yo, if we do X amount, half a million, I'll be fine, right? In a day. This last launch, we had over 850,000 people hit the site in one day. Damn. Eight, and I put a screenshot because a lot of people don't believe me. I, I showed screenshots of this on my, on, on my uh, YouTube channel. During COVID, the amount of sales we did, this was supposed to be a small launch because I knew, you know, incredible. And that is my baby. We got a launch coming up right now, the 29th. We redesigned everything, upgraded quality. And like the amount of money I spent just on R&D for the, for the fabrics was crazy. Um, this is going to be massive. This is, this is our largest launch that we've done right now, inventory wise. Right. And projecting with the amount of marketing dollars we're going to spend, hopefully we'll hit about a million, a million and a half in about two days, two, three days of traffic into the site, um, which is a crap load of sales. That company is, is, is interesting because. So, again, I'll give you an example just to just to put into perspective by our fifth launch. So we're, right now we're in launch number 10, I believe, by our fifth launch. That was the first time that we broke a million dollars in a day. So within one day, we generated a million dollars in sales. The logistics of fulfilling a million dollars worth of orders, because again, customers don't care if I got 10, 20, 100 million. All they care is that they want their product tomorrow, right? Um, the logistics of fulfilling that like this, incredible. And it's taken us about seven launches. to Now we're, now we're rocking and rolling, right? We'll get a crap load of orders and we'll get them out in about two, three days, which is impressive as a team. Like we'll just hire a bunch of temporary employees, get them ordered all at once. And bro, like we're moving, we're a well-oiled machine at this point. Um, that's my baby. I love that company. And you know, I'm going to keep pushing that one. That's the one company I probably will never sell just because it means something to me. Right. That was the one company that, it was kind of like redemption for Estaniga. Um, then we, we started Jade Black. That one we started, it's, about, it's been about a year and a half. Uh, within one year, we turned it into a seven-figure company. Right now, it's blowing up, mainly because I wanted a company that was a smaller product, easier to ship, less inventory size, and was unisex. I wanted to sell to women. I was too bottlenecked, only selling to men. And by the way, Essentials will turn into a women's line by next year. Um, but Jade Black... We are 45% of our customer base is women, which is amazing, right? Because I want to detach from my brand. I don't want it to be Jade Black Jose's brand. I want it to be Jade Black. I don't want it to be Essentials Jose's brand. I want it to be Essentials. I want it to live without me, right? 
I want it to be a living, breathing organi organization without me. So Jade Black is on, on a faster track to that, mainly because we have a women's department. Killing it, we just launched prescription lenses, which is a whole other logistical mess, which I had no idea what I was getting into until we launched it. Um, but again, amazing in sales, so it's worth the, 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 the time. So we have heat grooming. That one's been a little bit of a pause, mainly because our factories are all, all backed up with COVID, but hopefully we'll bring that back. Uh, we have our fragrance line. Again, COVID backed us up on that one. Uh, I'm part owner of Manscaped. That one's just slaughtering it. I take no responsibility in that. The team there is just amazing. I just, I got equity in the company. Um, and then, oh, and then right now, which next month I'm launching what I believe what I believe will be my biggest company yet. So this one, I haven't told any, not even my audience knows about this, right? And I, I can't even say it here, but um, I've always wanted a tech company. And I've always, and, I, and, I, and I'm taking this almost as a test of me. Like how good am I at building a business without my brand, right? Because it's not that it's easy to build a business, but once you have a brand, it's obviously easier to spark sales, grab that money, turn it into marketing, right? Obviously. I'm not going to promote this brand at all. I'm not even going to put my name behind this brand. I've already funded it. It's already developed. We, we spent a crap load on developers. It's a tech company that I believe is making a solution. And I believe, I believe it'll be my first hundred million dollar company. I think the solution is that good. Wow. wow. If it is, if it is, I'll tell you what, I'll contact you guys again. I'm like, I was right. If it's not, I'm gonna just stay quiet. I'll be like, shit, it never happened. Okay. No, we, we wanna learn about the failures too, though. Yeah. We wanna know about it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, just like I told you, Estaniga, I'll tell you about these failures. Yeah, the I love only reason I'm not saying it, honestly, though, is because I don't wanna use my brand behind it. I don't wanna use my brand to spark any sales. I wanna run it by itself, start from the ground up. Yeah. Because I believe the solution is that good yeah. to the problem. Okay. You know? So once it comes out, how can we find out about it? I'm like, I'm curious, actually. Um, you can't. You can't. You get, yeah, you got to give it a few months. Because right now, we're, what we're going to drop is the, the beta phase in August, where we're going to bring in about 2,000 users to use the app and um, see how it functions and, and, and if it you know, facilitates their life. Uh -huh. uh, but again, it's, it's something that almost everybody will use, both men and women. Everybody uses it on a daily basis. And it's something that I believe nobody has done yet. Like there's other others services for this, but not the way we're doing it. I believe it's more effective and efficient and better. You know, it's going to yield better results. You said it yourself, man. You have created a solution to a problem that nobody else has yeah. done. And that's, that's yeah. worth the hundred million. You know, I always yeah. say, you know, you, you create a solution to problems. That's how you make money. So I have a whole, I call it my little black book where every time I have an idea, um, I write it down that I think is going to make me money. I wrote this idea down last year, believe it or not. And I just got time because of COVID and everything slowed down a little bit. I had time to actually develop this right now. And I was like, this is the time to do so, you know? Um, but yeah, that's my little black book. And the way I see it is like, hopefully my, my goal is that I've said this in my videos before. So everything I'm saying here, you know, if you guys watch my, like if you watch my videos, you probably have heard it. Like I believe your goal should be crazy, yeah. ridiculous, stupid. And when I say that, most people don't understand what I mean, but like, I believe your goal is like my goal. I want to make a billion dollars, right? I want to generate that. Will I make it? I have no idea, right? We got a, I got a while to, to, to go, a long while to go, right? But the reason why I think they should be so massive is because it, it, it's like fuel and kind of like what I was talking about the gym, right? The way I see goals is like a North star or think about like the tip of a mountain, right? You see, think of Mount Everest, a mile up. You're sitting at the bottom and you're like, that's impossible. Making a, mil a billion dollars to me right now, impossible, right? Crazy. It's, it's ridiculous. But kind of like the gym, if you just put your head down and listen to that voice all the way in the back, one more step, one more step, one more step. Before you know it, you look up and you're like, all right, yeah. still impossible, but I'm a little bit closer. Head down, one more step, one more step. And just keep listening to that voice in the back. You know what I mean? That's why I believe, and it doesn't matter where you are, whether you want to be the best missionary out there, the best teacher out, make your, make your goal ridiculously high. And then every day you put your head down and work one more step, one more step. You'd be surprised at how far you can get, yeah. Yeah. you know, and in and, and my own life, I've seen it. And, and, and it's like, it's, it's incredible. And 
this is why journaling is important because I journal a lot. And especially when I was, I still have my entry from that day when I felt like I wanted to quit. And it's funny because you just turn the page and then turn the page and you start seeing the growth. And I, cause I, I, I journal my losses and my successes. And then I keep turning the page and then you're 10 pages in and you're like, wait a minute, this is incredible. And then you're five pages and you're like one step closer to my goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. your goal should be crazy. Uh -huh. best, the best goal setting book I've read was 10X Rule. Um, that book by Grant, that book, like it was almost scary because I had big goals for myself. And then he's like, like think 10 times bigger than that. And it, was, it, it genuinely scared me. And I was like, how the hell can I do that? But I think it, it, it brings in a little bit of that fear and a little bit of that anxiety, but it, but it brings just so much fuel and just so much like hunger. And, and, and that it makes, it makes your target bigger or I mean, it makes you want to push harder. Think about it. If he set a goal for a hundred million, he probably hit it now, but let's just say he, you know, a hundred million, you know, and he hit it. Okay, cool. But if he set a goal for a billion and let's just say he did 800, you know, hey man, at least you know, came a little short, but you are a lot better than a hundred. Exactly. You're just making your, your bullseye better, right? Yeah. And it's the, you can turn, you can do micro goals to get to that big ass goal, right? But um, I think if you set your goal too low, you, you might get complacent, yeah. you know? Uh -huh. yeah. You're comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Now, like with your brand, man, you can, you can start a ton of companies. You can do wallets, you can do backpacks, you can do, like, you can do everything. What keeps you focused on the things that you do and what, like, why do you say no to certain things? Um, I think you gotta be great in, with what you have. It's very easy to, to overwhelm your plate, right? You don't wanna be mediocre in a bunch of things. You wanna be great in a few things, right? Um, believe it or not, we do get a lot of brands that reach out with fully developed brands. Like just, here you go. Just become the face. Here's certain X amount of equity. Um, I did that once and um, it just doesn't work. Two things. One is because I need to lead the company. I don't like, I'm my own boss for a reason. I don't want somebody else to have equity in a company that I, that I work for. And especially my face is associated to it. That's w one reason. Um, and the second reason is I need to, I need to have created the, 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 the solution. And I don't know if that's weird or egotistical or what, but it's like, I see it more as like, if I really don't think it's a problem, I'm not just gonna sell you something just to make an extra buck, right? Like, you know how easy it would have been to me to create a, a I don't know, what can I create that's easy? Um, let's say I, I could have packaged all my videos into a program and sell them, that's so easy, right? But like, I already give you that. I already give you that solution. I'm not gonna resell it to you, you know what I mean? If it was new information, yeah. But a lot of people like to do that, just repackage and sell. Right. Like none of my stuff is, for example, like if you look at my essentials, everything's custom made. No, easy would have been for me to go AliExpress, order 10 shirts, put essentials on it and send and drop ship that easy. And I don't have to worry about logistics either. You know what I mean? Uh, but I want an actual solution. I want something that I, I really believe is making your life better. Yeah, if you don't yeah. believe in it, it's going to be hard to sell. Proud of. Are you proud of? You can put your name on it. You know, you, you can put your name on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to make money in a, in a sleazy way, mm -hmm. you know? Now, other than, than your brand and teaching men's fashion, what do you think has led to some of those successes of like Essentials and Jade Black? Why do you think they're so successful without, without your brand? That's a good question. Um, something that a lot of YouTubers don't realize is that our, our, the attention that we have, either they take it for granted or they don't realize that it can go away really fast, right? Um, I value every single person that, that, that puts a comment in one of my pictures that like them just taking the time out of their day to comment, watch that to me is valuable, right? Like that's why I call them my brothers on my video. Like that's it. Time is your most valuable asset. That's better than you giving me a hundred dollar bill, right? I have your attention. That's like, I'll never take that for granted. But more importantly than that, what happens is that a lot of influencers, what they do is they either stay comfortable with just making videos, right? A lot of them do that. And, or they make a merch line, like where the Jose brand or where the Jake Pollard brand, right? Which is fine. You're going to make revenue, but you're only going to make revenue as long as you are relevant. You're not really creating a solution, right? You're giving your army something to wear. I genuinely try to build 
a business that can live off on itself. That's what I was saying a few minutes ago. If you remember, I don't want it to be tied to my brand. Yeah. That's why I'm not the model. If you go to those websites at first I was, cause we were just starting off, right? We were saving money. Now I hire professional models right now. We have a whole shoot that's about to happen for this 29th collection. These are pro models that have modeled for Versace and uh, one of them models for Balmain and stuff like that. Like I'll hire professional models to model the clothing. I don't want it to be tied to me. I genuinely work to grow brands that live and breathe by themselves that actually offer a solution. And I usually do that through obviously a lot of marketing. I spend a lot on marketing, not just me. So that plus multiply me. And then that's where all the, re- the sales come in. Yeah. That's, that, that, that makes a good point, man. I love, yeah. I loved, um, I think it was at the beginning of quarantine, um, your 4am uh, video that you posted of you on the run and everything. I feel like ever since then, man, like you hit another gear, you know, and you hit, like, so, go no, do you, do you feel that in yourself? And like, like what, what was kind of your mindset in that time? Yeah, no, it's fun. Like, man, you are so observant. This guy's good at interviewing. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. You're what right. a beast. Um, I laughed because I legit, again, I, everything, I talked to my wife about everything, right? Again, important in your partner. Um, I remember when, when COVID hit, everybody was freaking out, right? Economic collapse, this, that, this, end of the world. We're locked down. And I even said that in my video. And I'm like, a lot of people see obstacles, whereas I see as an opportunity. Like, the fact that everybody is shut down, like, to me, on my end, as a creator, I was thinking, all right, lockdown, I got to produce more content. Lockdown, everybody's slowing down, I got to work more than them, right? Where they're down, I'll keep working. I got to catch a lead, right? Locked down, let me work on something new. I worked on this company. Eight months have passed. Do you know what you could have done in eight months? Create a whole business. That's what we did, right? Like, but people don't, don't see, people just saw an obstacle. Oh man, I'm, I'm tired of being at home, right? Those are complainers. You'll complain about everything. You can have a million bucks in your bank account and you would still complain. You would find something to complain about, you know? So when COVID hit, I told, I told my wife, I was like, this is our time to get better, right? Let's work out more. Let's work, work more. We have more time. Let's spend more time together, right? That's an opportunity, not an obstacle. What happened was, in my opinion, a gift. Yo, the U.S. government is literally paying people almost a thousand bucks a week, depending on state. You're for unemployment. You're clocking in fifty-two k a year, right? And you get to stay home. That's an opportunity, not an obstacle. That's so true. But they'll never see that. They'll never see that. Yeah. Right. You're making more than what someone. You can read the stats. Some people in unemployment. We're making 20K and I know personal people, they filed for unemployment. Now they're making about 50K a year when they were making 20, 25. Yeah. With unemployment, right? That's a whole opportunity. Most of them blew it by now, but you know, the opportunity was there. Uh-huh. Dude, where, where do you think that mindset comes from, man? Like what, what gives you so much of that hunger and drive? I know we've talked a little bit about it, but like, I feel like at your purest levels, dude, you're just... You always want to go, go, go. Um, I think, again, one, the, the, the massive goal that I set for myself, right? It gets me up every morning, every morning, right? Like that move to New York we're doing. It's a multi-million dollar move. It's a 30,000 square foot office, expensive, right? I could have stayed here and kept that money in my pocket and bought me another supercar, right? I think this will make us, this is the next step. Right. This is going to expand new talent, new opportunities, new connections. Right. That's what I believe. I might be wrong. I don't know. But in my in my gut, it's telling me this is the next move. Right. Um, so one is uh, one above everything is God. Like I always since day one, it's that hunger. I feel like he gives me the strength and the hunger to keep moving, to keep moving, to keep moving. Right. Uh, number two is that the big goal. And three is my family. It's my motivation. Right. Like. When I see my daughter, when I see my wife yeah. and, and my parent, they, I don't want them to, 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 to need anything, right? And more importantly, I don't want to just build wealth for me. I want generational wealth, right? Which is why it's important to build businesses that live and breathe by themselves. I want something that I can actually pass down and continue to grow, yeah. right? That's, that's breaking a chain. Like I said, one generation ago, 
My mom was on a dirt road one generation ago. What is my daughter going to do? Yeah, like, man. That gets me up every day. That pushes me every day. I love you know? it, man. I love it. Like my, my family, my, on my mom's side, they came from Colombia and Venezuela. And so I've been back there and I visit family and it's, you're bathing yourselves with buckets of water and there's yes, cockroaches cold everywhere. Water. Cold oh yeah. Water, by the way. Yeah, your swimming pool, your swimming pool is a concrete tub in the backyard. Yes. <laughs> and like I love that man because I, I like I'm nowhere near anywhere right now, but I see yeah. the vision and I'm like, dude, I can't freaking wait till like my family is able to experience those fruits of my labor and everything, yeah. man. And, and, and that's all you need, bro. That that drive to get up every single day. A why? Why are you doing this? Right? And it's usually better if it's not anchored in something material. By the way, 4 a.m. So I expect you 4 a.m. at the crib. At the office. <laughs> All right? I have to you know what I mean? You, you'll be, you'll, you'll be missing a couple of days. So if you want your family to get the fruits of your labor, you gotta be on time. I've, I've been slacking. I have been. <laughs> but yeah, just, call, just call him out on the podcast for a second, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro. Usually if you can find a why that's not based in material things, yeah. it's stronger. And one thing that I want to clarify with that big ass number that I want, right? That billion dollars. And I'm sure Sam, like you could, you could probably relate to this where in my opinion, I genuinely believe that anything over a hundred thousand dollars is not necessary. I could live a happy, great life at hundred K a year. I do not need anything over hundred K. Now it's not because I am greedy that I want more, right? It's again, it's that drive that I have inside to build more. And I see entrepreneurship almost like a game, right? So hundred K was level one. Level two was a million. Level three was 10 million. Level four is now a hundred million, right? So what you do in each level needs to, again, evolve. What I did to get a hundred grand is not going to get me a million. What I did to get me a million will not make me a hundred million. The reason why I want a billion is because I'm in, I'm curious to know what I'm going to have to do and who I'm going to have to become to unlock that level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a great, like, and I like to clarify that because a lot of people are like, man, you're so greedy. Like, why do you need all that money? Like, I don't. I, I, I really don't. But, but you create jobs. You create opportunities. You create, a, you know, things like that. It's not about that. You know, I just did a post about that today. You know, you know, uh, you know, uh, a AOC, you know, said that, you know, uh, working class doesn't need billionaires. You know, billionaires need the working class. I'm like, that's much of bullshit. Who are we going to work for? You know, who, 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 who are we going to work for? You know what I can't stand when people say like, oh, Jeff Bezos doesn't deserve. No, that man deserves $300 billion. He's made all our lives easier. Yo, I buy something, it's there the next day. That's worth money, right? Like he worked for what he has. I can't stand when people say that because I know what it's like to build. I can't imagine the work he had to put in to get where he's at, right? It must have been exponential. Yes. He deserves every penny. And he said it in an interview once. It's not that I made 170 billion for myself, I created 900 billion in capital for, and, and wealth for others. Yeah. There's, he only owns 16% of a trillion dollar company. It's so crazy. it's like what you said, he created all this wealth. Nobody right. sees that part. Of course, he's worth more. It's easy to sit down on your couch and bitch about somebody who, who, who went and worked hard and they see the final chapter. They didn't see the first 20 chapter of everything that he has and all the failures and all the trials and tribulations. So it's, it's easy to say that. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's easy to point your finger when he's on top, yeah. you know? Exactly. Yeah. Now, Jose, what do you, what do you do, man, for, for personal development? How are you developing yourself and sharpening your skills to get you to that billion or to get you to that hundred million right now? A um, couple things, a lot of reading, like I said, like that's the best way to stimulate your mind to new ideas. Like, it's so easy to cap out. Like your mind's limited to your experiences. But every time you read, and, it, and, and when I say reading, it doesn't necessarily need to be a hardcover book. You can read an article. You could read a study, right? You could, there's so many ways to, exp you could read a blog post or you could listen to a podcast. You could, uh, something so simple, like even listening to Joe Rogan, let's make it simple for, for people that are younger, right? Let's say you don't want to read. Joe Rogan has so many interesting characters and, and, and people on his podcast, right? that you can learn something new every time you listen to that. Yeah. Now you have more experience. You have a little bit more experience, right? Where you can, you might find a problem that you can create a solution to, or it might give you creativity, creativity to spark something new. So just a lot of content, just content in general, content that edifies, right? Not, not bikini girls on Instagram, like, you know, like act content that actually gives you value. Yeah. Um, the gym, 
working out every day builds you up, right? Uh, weights break you down. So I, in my schedule, believe it or not, I work out twice a day. I work out once in the morning with my wife and at home, it's usually like a cardio. We have like, you know, like the skier, the, the assault bike, we have all that stuff. So it's a crazy cardio workout. And then at night I do weights. Um, every night I go home and when I lay down in bed, I just like, like the sigh that I give, cause I, I'm so much, like I'm in pain, right? Like I'm sore. That breaks you down, right? It makes you a little bit stronger. And then the next thing you're next time, instead of lifting a hundred pounds, you lifted 105 pounds, right? That personal development you see, right? Um, God, obviously I always put God number one, his uh -huh. prayer and, uh, this, he always pushes me, you know? Um, but that, I think those to me is, are, are the, the, the biggest ways to develop yourself, you know, to, to find new experiences, new ideas, new creativity, you need to expose yourself. And if you want a, a better way, and maybe you have the funds for it, travel, right? Like see new cultures, et cetera. I don't have the time for that, but, uh, if you do, Oprah, yeah. yeah, bro, you're a true one percenter. In one percenter, we say you got to have five areas of life, you know, uh, balanced out: faith, family, fitness, finance, and fun. You know, and oh, like you know, like and that. and when I look when I look at you, you know, you know, at, gosh, man, I can't believe you're 25. Holy crap! You know, what I mean, like 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 you know, uh, a billionaire might be a, a small goal for you. I know, I know that you're seeing. I, I know, I know you're seeing. Like, wow, I mean, that's unreachable. But at 25, man, I'm almost twice your age. So, um, so I think that you, that that's, that goes for you to lose. So, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you um, on the sideline and 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 watching you grow, man. It's, it's it's so awesome. Yeah, I appreciate your time, man. Like, I I know our audience is gonna get a ton of value from My this. My God, man. I did. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, thank you guys for having me, bro. This is this is an honor. One yeah. percenter, bro. Like, <laughs> absolutely, man. You fit the brand completely. Completely, completely. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, so guys, check him out at Teaching Men's Fashion on YouTube. Uh, you can find all this stuff from there. He's going to be in the suggested box right here, I guarantee you. Um, so guys, go check him out, and we'll see you next time. Hey, appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Hey, guys, if you liked today's episode, do me a huge favor. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a review and tag a few friends that you think can benefit from what we share today. Really appreciate it. God bless.